Hi, welcome to this new tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, we are going to create an image gallery that you can control with two buttons. So this is a preview of it. So I'm going to click next to go to the next image. So these are just different uh, images that I've created in PowerPoint just with the numbers so we can see how this works. So you can go up from 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So to begin, let's go to file. New project, Windows Form application. Let's call this one Image Gallery. Just type in the game. Okay, so just make it a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing on this one. Uh, we're going to need a couple of, uh, well, two different components mainly. We're going to need a picture box and we'll need a a uh, couple of buttons. So let's add those two buttons here first. I'm just going to copy and paste the button. So let's see it. Um, in the text portion of the button, we're going to change the button 2 to a greater than symbol and button 1 to a less than symbol. You can also change it to next or back if you want to. Oops, not that. Okay, we also need a picture box. <coughs> so just make the picture box slightly bigger so we can see, let's see the picture box here. All right. So this is the outlook so far. Let's change the form title to Okay. So that way. And also frequently save your project. I cannot stress this enough. All right, so right click on the picture box, go to choose image. Uh, we are going to import the images inside the resources file. So we can click on import. Uh, these are the files that I created. You can use any that you want. Um, just remember they need to be JPEG, GIFs, or PNG files. They can also be bitmap, but bitmap files have a larger file size. So let's select all of them, click open. <coughs> select the first one, click OK. So right now it looks like that, so we just need to stretch it to the size. So if I go to size mode, stretch image, and then that's that. So save it again. So let's click on the next button here. So <coughs> this one I call it go next, like this. In So if you click on the little lightning bolt there, that goes to the events window inside the properties window. So okay, that's now taking us back to the... So events window back to the post. So when I type that in, if you press enter on there, it will go to the C sharp script and you can see the go next event has been added. If I click on the back button, go here and say type in go back, press enter. Now I have these two. So alongside with these two, we are going to need one more function. So change image. Okay, the reason we're creating one more function is because we have all of these files inside the resources here. So in order for us to access all of them, we're going to be using a switch statement, which I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But because we have two buttons, we might need to repeat the switch statements in both of the buttons to understand where those images are going to. So instead of repeating them, we make one function and then we can call the, that function from those events that way we only have to write the code once okay let me just show you how this works so let's go make a global variable called int i equals to one so here we go when it's when the next button is pressed we're going to add one to the i so if say for example i is greater than five because we only have five images here I'm going to change i back to 1 so that way it just repeats goes back to the first one in this one I'm going to say i minus minus because it's going to go back one we also going to say if i is less than 1 we change i to 5 so it's, it does a kind of a nice little loop there for us so at the moment we won't be able to even if you run it you won't be able to see anything there but this is where it's going to start getting slightly interesting so Inside of this function here, this function is a void. That means it's not going to return anything. It's not returning any data types whatsoever. But we will add one argument inside it. So it will take an integer. So int num. So that way, 
we can pass in a value inside this function and use that value to do our <coughs> follow the instruction that we need to follow here so let's make a switch statement here I'm going to uh, transfer the num inside here so <coughs> maybe I'll make it a bit bigger so slightly easier so let's go with case one so case one colon and then we'll just break that there so for example when this function is called we need to pass in a value if that value is called here then say for example if I pass in one then I need to tell it what happens inside the switch statement I need to tell it what happens when we find the number one that's been passed through to this function so in this case when the one is passed through we want to load up the one PNG file into the picture box so let's go to picture box one here not this one so this is the class and that's the component so the class is different than a component because components was already been added to the form so image equals properties dot resources and then obviously as you can see we have the one here okay so right now I can copy and paste this so let me type it again to four five okay so let's go to this one the case two case three okay if the case is full and then lastly if the case is five now um <clears throat> you might be wondering why there's no um, extension to this um, file so it should be one.png shouldn't it but it's not uh, the reason being is because when the files are imported into the resources so as you can see here they are the extensions are hidden by uh, C sharp and Visual Studio uh, due to their own reason so because they don't have it we just can access their names as we do so as we type in so if, for example if you didn't type that in if you type in the dot then you can see what resources we have available here so we just can pick the one that we need without worrying about the file extension so just to show you how this is supposed to work so right now I'm just gonna without um, trying to do anything else I'm just gonna type in here change image function and then let's say I want to I can pass in a value 4 inside of this so what I'm expecting is once that's gone it's going to go to this case here and then it'll go find number 4 so if I load that up <coughs> for now I can take a look okay so see it's loading up 4 from here so if I go here back and then let's say now I want to pass in the value of like 2 Okay, it will load up the second image from the list right that's pretty cool so now what we need to do we need to dynamically change it as the buttons are being pressed so right under this these if statements here we're gonna go there to change image and in here we're gonna pass in the value of i because as you can see i is being incremented and we also have a loop that's sorry we also have a selection that's checking if i is greater than five then we bring i back to one we're gonna do the same thing here change image and then I okay pretty simple so just to reiterate <coughs> we created a global um, integer called I we given a value of one uh, we've got two events here go next and go back and they're both linked to the buttons inside the next one we're adding one to I by saying I plus plus so each time it's clicked it's gonna add one to it and then if I is greater than five then obviously i equals to one and then we're running the change image function <coughs> and passing the value of i inside of it in the go back we're doing the reversal of this so i minus minus in this case and then if i is less than one then i becomes equals to five and then obviously we're running the change function so remember what i meant by um not having to do switch statements over and over again in both of these functions if we didn't have this function we'll have to add all of this code into this one and this one both so by running a function 
we are saving ourselves from repeating the code and making the program larger for no reason. Okay, so this is the main function that's changing the image for us. So we have the change image and then inside of the parentheses is taken in an argument called int num. So that one can be passed through. So whenever we set i, that gets changed into that and then that gets triggered into this one here. So in the switch statement, we got five cases because we have got five pictures here. So with each case, we are loading up the specific images from the resources. Okay, with that being cleared out, let's go try to run it now. So right now we have got one. If I click, it goes to two, three, four, five, and then it should go back to one again. That's brilliant. So now if I go, it should go to five, four, three, two, one, back to five. So you can add as many images as you want as long as you have all of the cases here and you also need to change the values here to make sure that you have the boundaries to know. So you don't have to change the go back one because it will just, you know, it's just checking whether it's going below one but you might have to change this one because it won't know how many pictures you have until you sort of told it. So if I had like say 15, I could put down like 15 here and then obviously take it from there. We'll have to add the images and then add the switch statements here to make sure all the images are being displayed. Okay, uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. The source code will be available on moonict.com. So uh, I'll see you in the next one.